Good morning. Today we look at uh, Acts chapter 20, combining yesterday's and today's readings. And on Saturday we talked about uh, how the silversmiths were upset because Paul and these other disciples were teaching about Jesus and people were turning away and you know no longer buying as many silver statues. And they were so they had stirred up a commotion. And today it starts after the uproar had ceased, you know, so after the, the commotion had been dispersed and people had been told, you know, go home, we can't, you know, you don't do anything about this. Um, Paul has sent for the other disciples and after encouraging them and saying farewell to them, uh, he departed for Macedonia. So again, continuing on his missionary journey, continuing to spread the, the word of God and to encourage people that he's already visited with in their belief in Jesus as the Messiah. And, uh, you know, verse 2, when he had gone through those regions and had given the believers much encouragement, he came to Greece. So, I mean, he, you know, it says he goes to Macedonia, but, he, you know, and he, he's traveling around, and and he he gets to Greece, and he stays there for three months. Now, is he in Athens, or is he just in the wider area continuing to travel around. I mean, it's not really specific that way. But he was there for three months, and then he's going to set sail for Syria. And it says a plot was made against him by the Jews. And so rather than you know, go the way he had planned, he changed and he went back again through Macedonia. So a little bit of a jog back in his in his missionary journey, uh, as a way of safety. And I'm so thankful that we don't have to worry about our safety as we worship God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And it tells us, you know, who he was accompanied by some of these other disciples and, and they set sail from Philippi then after the days of unleavened bread. So this is the Passover. And then... Uh, it says on the first day of the week when they met to break bread, so breakfast time, Paul was holding a discussion because he was intending to take off the next day. And it said he spoke until midnight. Can you imagine? Uh, I, I don't imagine he was the only one speaking, I guess, but, you know, he spoke until, until midnight. Uh, from breakfast time in the morning until, you know, midnight, after bedtime, actually, so many times. And... And it was evidently evident that it was past bedtime because this one young man named Eutychus, you know, and they name him so that, so he's identifiable, but not just somebody in a crowd, but a specific individual fell asleep, fell out of a third story window to the ground. And they thought he was dead and should have been. But Paul went, laid his hands on him and said, don't be alarmed for his life is in him. He lives, you know, and he's okay. And, and he, you know, got up and went on his way. And, and, um, and then it says after he, this after this, he went upstairs, broke bread, and continued to converse with them. So, you know, he continued to speak after midnight, and they came to the breaking of the bread again. This is another, another morning breakfast meal, you know, and and he continues talking with them, encouraging them. And, and as I said, I'm sure that it's, you know, some conversation back and forth because nobody, nobody can just, you know, speak for that length of time, you know, a whole day without going on that way. Um, but, you know, they, you know, they continued to converse until dawn, he said, when he left. So, you know, roughly, roughly this day's time that he had spent talking and visiting with these people and encouraging them in their faith. These were people that, that believed and, you know, he was going to be, you know, going on his journey and, and uh, just to encourage them to, to remain faithful, to, you know, rather than, you know, I think many times these people, it's kind of like yesterday's lesson, you know, with the, you know, the, the seed takes root, but there is no depth to the soil or there's choked out by thorns. And, you know, so many, some of these early believers, I'm sure, were were swayed back, you know, by the Jewish leaders to, um, 
to their Jewish ways as they had been before. And some of the Greeks that became believers probably didn't remain for sure and for certain, you know, until a later time. And this is why Paul continued to encourage them to write letters to them and to to send Timothy or to send other other disciples to these communities. Just be, because there are so there were so many and still are so many things that would get in the way of people's belief in God. And and uh, and as we read in here, you know, the, the writer who is believed to be Luke says. We went ahead to the ship and set sail, intending to take Paul on there. And we, we, we. So, I mean, in many ways, you know, the writer of this, the book of the Acts of the Apostles, um, was very possibly on at least the second missionary journey, the third missionary journey of Paul. So he was an eyewitness account as he was writing. And it, it wasn't, you know, he wasn't getting all of this second hand or third hand and then writing it down after the fact but uh, making it a, an intentional effort as luke did with the gospel i sit down to write an orderly account of the life and the times of jesus the messiah and this was you know he intended to do the same thing and so we have this we went ahead and we set sail you know on uh, verse 14 when he met us at as at asos we took him on board and we sailed from there on the following day. And the next day we touched at, you know, so the, the writer is along on this journey. And and any time we, you know, in a court of law or if there's an accident or something, an eyewitness account, someone who saw what happened, someone who was there is much more believable than then, well, I heard on the news. I mean, well, the news we can trust, but I didn't see it. I didn't witness it, but I, I heard about it. And, and and so many times, you know how it goes, that the story goes from here to here to here to here, and it gets embellished a little bit. It's not quite the same. But an eyewitness account, uh, one that the person saw for themselves, experienced. I mean, when you experience something, you know, it, it stays with you so much more. It's, you know, if you're, if you're going to try to uh, build a birdhouse, for example, you know, if you just watch someone do it or if you read the instructions, it's not the same as if you take the wood and the glue and the nails and, and the saw and you cut and you, you physically do, do the work yourselves or gardening or any, any activity. When you do it, it's so much more real and it sticks with you so much longer and it's so much better that way. Um, so Paul set sail. He decided to go past Ephesus um, and he was eager to get to Jerusalem, it says, in time for Pentecost. And so just, you know, earlier it said on the first, you know, he wanted to, he, um, he left Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. This is the Passover. And the day of Pentecost is, you know, 50 days after the Passover. So, you know, he wanted to be back in Jerusalem by the day of the Pentecost. And he's, you know, he sent a messenger from one city to Ephesus. You know, he, he didn't stop in Ephesus because he, well, he knew that if he stopped there, he would be there for a while and most likely wouldn't get to Jerusalem on time. But he sent a message to Ephesus, you know, asking the elders of the church to meet with him. And, and so they came and, you know, he, he says, you know, you yourselves know how I lived among you. From the first day I said, serving the Lord with all humility. And, you know, you remember how I came to you and how um, I testified to both Jews and Greeks about, about our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he goes on and toward the later on, he says, um, I coveted no one's gold or silver. I worked to provide for myself in this time that I was with you, talking about Jesus and introducing you to the Messiah. Um, it, you know, I, I wasn't, wasn't taking advantage of you at all, but I was encouraging you in your life of faith. And, and Paul, um, 
you know, in, in verse 35, you know, it, it says, I remember the words of Lord Jesus Christ, for he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And, and I think about that, you know, gift giving. I mean, we, we all enjoy receiving gifts. There's no doubt about that. We enjoy, you know, receiving a phone call, receiving a Christmas present, a birthday present, a birthday greeting, uh, any of those kinds of things like that. We enjoy receiving them. But to give a gift to someone else, to give a gift of your time is the most important thing we can do. And to give someone the gift of, of witness of Jesus Christ as our Lord. I mean, another tremendous gift that we can give. And so it's, it's just a reminder to us that rather than covet things for ourselves and build up our own portfolio to give and to bless others with this love of Christ and with the grace that God freely gives to us. So it's, you know, and sometimes it's hard to give. We, we like to hold on to what is ours. But faith, faith is a gift from God. And it grows best as we share it with others.